Hello, I'm Reswan at Footprint to Wings, here to talk to you about how to set up a zero carbon coaching clinic. First, let me put on my zero carbon coaching cap. A zero carbon coaching clinic is basically an interactive space for you and your community to explore all the options to get to zero carbon. Here's the layout. You're going to need a big space for this, like an auditorium or a field. You start at one end, you work your way to the other. At the starting point, you get the rules of the game. The rules are simple. In the race to zero carbon, the first state to achieve a net zero carbon economy with the best quality of life wins. You're the player. Your state is your team as a whole, and between you, the player, and the whole state are a number of specialized teams. So anything, your household, corporation, club, it's a specialized team. So back to the start, you get the rules of the game, and then you face the switch. That's where we ask you, are you ready to make a switch? Are you ready to go all the way to zero carbon? If you're not, you check your mindset. And if you are, you check your emissions and see just how far you need to go to get to zero. The start is where players would take the pledge to race to zero carbon. By the way, you don't have to wait for a zero carbon coaching clinic. You can go to our website and pledge right now. Go to fp2w.org, click the Start Here tab, and you'll be on your way. Now it is totally all right to walk through the entire uh, clinic and then come back and face that question again. You do have to face the question though and it's a difficult question to face. Climate therapists will be standing by to help you out there. The mindset section is really about finding your intrinsic motivation and also grappling with the feelings of guilt and doom that come up when people talk about the uh, threat of climate change. So don't skip it. It's not a fluffy little thing. It's one of the key parts of coaching the Race to Zero Carbon. Climate therapists will be standing by. Check emissions. This is the part, right at the beginning, where you want to know, well, how far do I have to go to get to zero carbon? And also, what's my ranking? Who's in the lead? Which state, and you re recall, this is a 50-state race, your state is your team as a whole. Which state is in the lead? Who's in the top 10? Um, what's the national average? Who's bringing up the rear? The states are ranked by emissions per person, not by total emissions. If they were ranked by total emissions, Texas would be the worst state. However, Texas has a high population. So we take the total emissions, divide it by the population, and you get emissions per person. And that basically gives you a rate that shows you how effective a state is at meeting the needs of its citizens with a certain carbon budget. There's a lot of insight that comes from ranking states this way. For one thing, it triggers useful questions like, why is New York in the lead? Why isn't some other state doing better? This ranking system is a great coaching tool and a key part of our scoreboard. Speaking of which, Join the scoreboard committee. Also, we have a talk, Scoring the Race to Zero Carbon. It's about one hour, including Q&A. Contact us for information. Check Emissions, part two. Now you know your rank, but what you wanna know is what specifically your state is doing and how far it has to go to get to zero carbon. So you zoom in on your state, and here's where you take a look at your state's energy profile. Now let's zoom in a little bit closer so we can see the whole energy supply field. And the first thing we notice is that the state of New Jersey is about 20% decarbonized. This means 80% of the energy supply field is dominated by fossil fuels. So basically we're at the 20 yard line and we wanna know, can we go all the way to zero? To zero and beyond. Of course, this is a metaphor. Obviously, the field is not going to be measured in yards. It's going to be in units of power or energy. And clearly, we're not going to run straight down the field like it's a football game. We're going to simultaneously tackle different parts of the field and bring each of them to zero carbon. 
Note from the scoreboard committee, energy is just one factor in the race to zero carbon. As you can see in this chart from the Drawdown playbook, food and land use are as big, if not bigger, factors. But we're going to stick with energy emissions for now because it's easy to measure, and there's a lot of data on energy at the state level. Going forward, we will expand the scoreboard to include all emissions. But don't wait for that to happen. There's no time to lose here. The race to zero carbon is already in progress, and there's plenty to focus on here as we warm up. What's cool about breaking the field down into fuel type is that you start to see the type of solutions you'll need, and also the scale. So for example, motor gasoline. That's obviously uh, going to be about cars, and it's 20% of our field. So solutions start to immediately suggest themselves. Um, we could drive less, bike, take public transit. You know, that's going to whittle down the field size. But now to zero, we'd need to electrify the cars and switch to uh, zero carbon power plants to drive them. Jet fuel, flight. There's no easy substitute for that. Here's, by the way, why the race is really to net zero carbon. Because if you still want to fly or do other things that burn fossil fuels, that could be OK, but you just need to offset that carbon. And there are many ways to do that. For example, direct air capture of carbon. So we will get to that once we head to the solutions area of the coaching clinic. Before we head over to the solutions, let's recap. To recap, we're at the 20 yard line with fossils controlling 80% of the field. Now, there's a controversy here in the decarbonized part of the field. A lot of people don't like nuclear. They want to shut it down. But if they did, that would put us back to the four yard line. Now my advice as a zero carbon coach is that this is a race to zero carbon. First, go to the end of the field, get all the way to zero carbon, decarbonize, defossilize. Once you've succeeded in doing that, by all means, feel free to come back and get rid of the nuclear. Likewise, if you find it hard to get off fossils without nuclear power, or if you decide you don't want that many wind turbines or solar farms, you can always expand the nuclear. This is a multi-solution transpartisan race to zero carbon. How you get to zero and certain quality of life indicators are ultimately up to each state to decide. Remember, this is a 50 state race to zero carbon. Red state solutions, blue state solutions, wildcard solutions are all possible. But you do have to first show us the zero. Get to zero. Check your solutions. Once you've checked your emissions, you are ready to go on and start looking at solutions. When it comes to solutions, there are many different ways to slice the field. We've broken it into energy supply side plays, demand side plays, and meta beyond zero plays. But wait! Coaching the race to zero carbon is a privilege and responsibility that demands commitment to a high standard of excellence. Are you ready to run a zero carbon coaching clinic? Are you ready to be a zero carbon coach? Take the coach's pledge. Uphold the player's rights and the coaching code of conduct. Earn this cap. You've got to approach this clinic like a zero carbon coach. Holistically, creatively, strategically, systematically, with discipline. This is not an eco fair. There are no vendors allowed in the clinic. If you want vendors, you have to have them off to one side, maybe on the periphery. This is a sacred space, a focused space to bring clarity to a difficult challenge, develop problem solving skills, and come up with brilliant collective game plans. Begin with the end game in mind. Why are we doing this? Why are we sending a bunch of people through a zero carbon coaching clinic? It's because we want folks to be exposed to all the information and get a real sense of the game. And you're going to give all the players a playbook as they go through that they can mark up with their favorite plays. And they can put together a portfolio. Now at the end, you want them to bring their playbook to the scoring station, where you check if all of their plays add up to zero. Note to the scoreboard committee, we're going to want to do the playbook as an app 
so people's choice from this clinic and others throughout the state are automatically logged and aggregated using a ranked choice algorithm, of course. You see, this is part of a participatory process, a collective decision-making exercise. The clinic is where everyone gets familiar with all the plays, with each other, and with talking about the plays. Out of this process, we're going to develop a plan that everyone understands and actually wants to carry out. Energy Supply Side Plays. In an actual zero carbon coaching clinic, you'd get a lot more detail on each of the plays. The actual clinic is about a day long, a weekend long, a whole week. It's intense, right? Now this video, just a quick overview, fasten your seatbelts, here we go. First stop, fossils. Key plays include banning fracking, blocking pipelines, divestment, shareholder action, gasoline tax, carbon fee and dividend, and carbon capture and sequestration. Now, in a zero carbon coaching clinic, uh, you don't just list the plays. You show the relationships between them. You get people thinking strategically. Banning fracking and blocking pipelines are classic defense plays. They don't stand alone. You have to pair them with other plays if you want to win the game. Like, if you block fossil energy here, you're going to need to replace that lost energy by bringing renewables and nuclear online here. Or demand side, you might be thinking we're defense, we're the X, and the corporations and oil companies are offense, so they're the O, right? And these evil corporations want to lay down a pipeline and here we are, good citizens, blocking it. And if we just shut them down, it's game over for fossils. The problem is that the pipeline is just the delivery system, and what's being delivered is fossil fuel, and who is that fuel being delivered to? Us. We're the receivers. So we're here blocking the pipes, playing defense, and we're back here waving our hands saying, hey, send me some more of that cheap gas, I'm wide open. So we're part of the offense, and we're sending mixed messages to oil companies. How much of a mixed message? New Jersey gets 30% of its energy from natural gas. Some of that's for electricity, some of it's for heating. If you're coaching the fossil section, you're going to be sending people over to the demand side area where they can look at electrifying their cars and retrofitting their homes. Heads up, these plays come with a question of who's going to pay for this and how. That will lead our players to the finance plays. You might be feeling confused right now. Don't panic. If this was an actual coaching clinic, you would be able to take your time, go back and forth um, between stations, and you'd see a lot of the same plays from different perspectives. There's a lot of overlap and cross-referencing. Banning and blocking plays do have value in slowing down oil companies and raising their cost of doing business. However, if you aren't reducing your demand, and if you in fact do just want to keep the pipelines and the fracking out of your part of the world, then it's not a mixed message you're sending, you're just doing a straight up NIMBY play. NIMBY stands for not in my backyard, and it refers to when people don't want to propose development anywhere near them. NIMBY is a big factor in the race to zero carbon, probably a deciding factor for most plays. Zero carbon coaches have to keep that NIMBY coefficient in mind. Now, if you're still using the product, you're saying we want the gas. We just don't want the fracking infrastructure here, right? So uh, somebody else has to do the fracking for you to have that gas. So like we've passed a ban on fracking in New Jersey, but one third of our state's energy comes from natural gas. So that means we're happy to take the gas they frack in Pennsylvania and Ohio. You guys keep fracking. Thank you very much. Oh, and we don't want the waste either, all that frack waste. So you keep the frack waste, Ohio. Thanks again. Anyway, that does come across as kind of entitled. Note on scoring. Each state is scored for consumption of energy, not production. So even if Ohio is doing the fracking, if New Jersey is consuming that gas, those emissions are added to New Jersey's score. So, demand side plays are where you're going to win or lose this game. And demand side plays mean you have to spend money on retrofitting your home, you know, switching from gas to geothermal or electric heating. And who's got that kind of money? Now, we already mentioned a few of the fossil finance plays. The most important one is the carbon fee and dividend play. 
As you recall, we had our oil and gas companies over here producing the gas, and we're over here receiving the gas. It's not really offense-defense, it's producer-consumer, and we're all offenders here. So, carbon fee and dividend. Here's how it works. The producers get charged a fee for fossil fuel at the source. Produce more, pay more. What happens to the fee? Where does the money go? Well, all of it gets distributed to American households on an equal basis. All the consumers get a cut. So, we all get money. That makes this a basic income play as well. So now what happens? Well, the producers had to pay a fee to produce gas. So, they're going to raise the price to cover their cost. And meanwhile, you, the consumer, have extra money. So now you could just turn around and use that extra money to buy that more expensive gas, and then you just break even and nothing changes. But what's more likely is that you're going to say, hey, wait a minute, that gas is expensive, and I've got this cash. So you know what? I'm going to spend it on a home retrofit, make my home cozier and more energy efficient, and then I don't need to buy as much gas. And then the producer is going to say, oh my gosh, this gas production is costing me and people are buying less of it. So I'm going to phase out the gas. Mm. Carbon fee and dividend creates a predictable carbon price that sends a clear market signal, which will lead to a zero carbon economy. Heads up, the carbon fee and dividend play is in motion. It requires passing laws. The specialized team working to make this happen is Citizens Climate Lobby. You should join them. They probably have a chapter in your town. They are a grassroots organization dedicated to this one play. Carbon fee and dividend is one of the most important plays in the playbook, and Citizens Climate Lobby is one of the most effective, inclusive, specialized teams in the race to zero carbon. For more information, check out their website, citizensclimatelobby.org. Let's wrap up the fossil plays with a look at carbon capture and sequestration. There are a lot of ways to capture carbon. What we're talking about here is capturing it from a fossil power plant. For some people, coal and natural gas count as clean energy. You just need to capture the carbon emissions. And there's even some resale value to the sum of this carbon. It's like, you know, carbonization. You can actually, there's a market for it. But most of it you would stick in the ground. That's where you would sequester or store it. Now, if your main goal is decarbonization and you're going to burn the fossils anyway, you should definitely do this play. A reminder here, in the race to zero carbon, it's not just about the emissions. It's also about quality of life. And it's not just about your quality of life. It's about everyone's quality of life. Now existing or here and after born. The people of the future are watching this game with great interest. What are they saying about us? That we knew the Earth was a giant fossil battery, took a billion years to charge, yet we depleted it like that? The kids of the future, trapped in a global warming hellscape. Are people even going to tell them that there was this time when we had all this stuff? Like lipstick, fertilizer, solvents, plastics, you name it. Everything made out of fossil stuff. And we just burned it up. Zero carbon coaches, um, going back to the mindset, making that switch. The stuff fuel switch is an important part of this. Make sure people are thinking stuff, not fuel. Stuff, not fuel. Okay, so we're going to phase out fossils. We're not going to think of them as fuel anymore. It's a precious resource that we're burning for no good reason. So we want people to start thinking that way. And now we've got to look at the alternatives. What are we going to use instead of the fossils? This is where the zero carbon coaching clinic is different from anything you're used to. Most people have no idea what it would take to replace fossils. They have some vague idea that renewables are involved, but nothing specific in mind. At a zero carbon coaching clinic, we take an unflinching, candid look at the options. What you're going to do is you're going to look at your energy supply field like a football field, except instead of yards or units of energy, you're going to measure it in power plants. 
Why? Because you want to take possession of the field. You want to push the fossils off. And that means putting alternative energy supply on the field. And this field, it's not a spreadsheet. It's a physical space. It's your state. It's your county. It's your backyard. And these power plants are not abstractions. They are physical objects. So you want to put these physical objects in this physical space. As a zero carbon coach, just like a football coach, you want to know if your players can actually take the field. So you need to know the numbers and where these power plants would go. We're setting up the clinic this way on purpose. You need to hit the players with the sobering facts as soon as possible. That way, they're going to be far more motivated to go through the rest of the clinic and figure out other ways to reduce their demand and offset their carbon, because there are a whole bunch of other solutions to look at. But we start with the energy supply side plays for the sobering effect it has on anyone contemplating this game. So how many power plants and how do we calculate it? For now, we're just going to do a back of the envelope calculations. And we're going to say that to switch off fossils, you have to electrify everything. So we wave our magic wand and we electrify everything, you know, driving, heating, cooking. It's all electric. Now we also hold lifestyle constant. So it's going to be the same lifestyle everyone has today, but it all runs on electricity. Now that's the baseline and it's a maximum. How many power plants does your state need to deliver that electricity? So let's run some numbers for New Jersey, starting with nuclear. Taking a look at the energy supply field, we see 15% of New Jersey's energy is nuclear. And we know, because we looked it up, that comes from four power plants. So we extrapolate. 15% of the energy is four nuclear power plants, so 100% would be 27 power plants. So New Jersey's energy supply side uh, field is 27 nuclear power plants long. But wait, not all nuclear power plants are the same size. Three of the nuclear power plants are about one gigawatt equivalent. And that fourth one is only 600 megawatts. So it's really like 3.6 nuclear power plants. Let's recalculate. Recalculating, New Jersey's energy supply side field is closer to 24 nuclear power plants long. And where would you put 24 nuclear power plants? Well, right now, New Jersey has three nuclear power plants clustered on one square mile here in the south. So if three fit onto one square mile, then 24 would fit onto eight square miles. And you already have one mile down, so you just need to find seven square miles of backyard and talk the neighbors into some nuclear power plant clusters. No plays without a player. So what about renewables? Well, that's a lot more work to calculate, but luckily, someone has done the work for us already. You can find 100% renewable plans for each and every state, courtesy of Mark Jacobson and The Solutions Project. Just go to their website, thesolutionsproject.org, click on Clean Energy, then click on your state, and you'll get to the poster with their suggested mix of renewable energy for your state. As you see, the proposed mix for New Jersey is 55% offshore wind, 10% onshore, 27% solar farms, 3.5% residential rooftop, 2.8% commercial rooftop, and the rest is negligible. So let's check out this solar rooftop category. Now, I don't know how you feel about this, but this is one of those things that was a shock for me. What it's saying right here is that if we max out solar rooftop in residences and businesses, it's still less than 7% of the energy supply field. It's not even a first down. Maximum rooftop, you know? So all the houses that can get solar panels, get them. All the businesses, the office parks, the parking lots that can get solar, get them. And it's still less than 7% of the total. That's shocking. And you know, this is not small change. That 7% solar rooftop is about the same as two large nuclear power plants worth of energy. Yet we still have 93% of the way to go. But wait, you may be saying, that's not maximum rooftop. I mean, how do you, how do you know it's maximum rooftop? You know, what is maximum rooftop? How many solar panels, how many houses? That's actually a good thing to organize around. Good question. But still here, it, it, it just says a few percent. So where are you getting this from? These percents are nice, but they don't tell us how many power plants we need. We need to go deeper. Now check it out. There's a link at the bottom of each poster. 
and it takes you to a page with more links that eventually gets you to the data. So let's just cut to the chase. Here's the spreadsheet for New Jersey. Check it out. Here, under energy technology, is residential rooftop. And here, under number of devices, it says 1.7 million homes need solar panels. That would be the maximum. And apparently 100,000 homes already have panels because under a number of new devices, it says we have 1.6 million homes to go. So uh, now you may be thinking, hey, New Jersey has over 3 million homes. Uh, this is only half, so how is this a maximum? Way to challenge things. You should definitely join the scoreboard committee. Maximum solar rooftop doesn't mean all houses. Not all rooftops qualify for solar energy. Some face the wrong way. Some have trees blocking the sun. And you don't want to make the rookie mistake of cutting down the trees. Trees are cool. Now, for your zero carbon coaching clinic, you're going to want to consult with the solar experts in your state and nail down that maximum rooftop number. And you also want to get that maximum number for cities and counties so that everyone can see their own local end game. And then you start coaching. For the players who think they should get solar panels, but they're actually not well suited to it, you want to be able to point out the alternatives. For the players who have solar panels and think they're done, uh, you're going to have to point out that's not even a first down. And you want to try to do this without crushing their spirit. For players who would benefit from the solar rooftop play, you're going to have to help them navigate all the information and connect them with that play. So, you want to make sure you've reached out to solar rooftop coaches beforehand and they're at your clinic. That's an important part of a zero carbon coaching clinic. You've got to coordinate with the local organizers and experts, brainstorm with them about strategies and end games, connect them with local players. Now let's check out this next category, solar photovoltaic plants, also known as solar farms. The Solutions Project recommends New Jersey get 27% of its energy from solar farms. That's about nine gigawatt equivalent, according to them, and which is about nine nuclear power plants. Now a solar farm is basically a field covered with solar panels. So the question is, how much area has to get covered with solar panels? And the answer is 383 square kilometers. And that's a tad bigger than Essex County. Note from the scoreboard committee. According to some experts, the area required is going to be much larger, closer in size to Morris County. This is a big difference, and the referees will need to get to the bottom of it. Where would these solar farms go? Obviously, you're not going to completely pave over one county with solar panels. You're going to distribute them in all the counties. So you need to figure out the dedicated area in each county for solar panels. You need to pull out the maps and see if you have enough unused land for each county's share of the total. And, uh, you know, and do they all add up? Can we go all the way to maximum solar farm? If not, how far can we go? On to wind. The Solutions Project proposes 10% of New Jersey's energy to come from onshore wind, about 3.3 gigawatt equivalent. How many wind turbines would that be? Guess. Make the players in the clinic guess, too. Okay, and the answer is 3,185 wind turbines. And where would you put 3,185 wind turbines? You can't put them together like a bunch of flowers. You have to spread them out. They can't go near tall things like buildings or trees. So you need farms and open space. 1,416 square kilometers of farms and open space. That is about the area of Atlantic County. Now, like solar farms, you wouldn't put them all in one county. Wind developers would actually prefer to put them on hilltops and the shoreline. Okay, so I'm told most shoreline communities have already banned wind power, like onshore, because, you know, birds, tourism, that sort of thing. Wind teams are focusing on offshore wind first. If you get wind developers at a clinic, Ask them what the onshore endgame is and if it can go as far as the Solutions Project proposal. But don't worry if this play is out of reach. The amount of onshore wind that they say we need is close to the amount of nuclear power we already have. So if you just hold on to the existing nuclear power plants, and that takes up, you know, like 
two square miles tops. You can skip this play and leave 550 square miles untouched. Finally, offshore wind. The Solutions Project says New Jersey can get 55% of its energy from offshore wind. That's 18.3 gigawatt equivalent, like 18 nuclear power plants. How many turbines is that? Guess. And also make sure the players guess. And the answer is 9,401 5 megawatt wind turbines. That's a big number. To help wrap your head around it, the New Jersey coastline is 130 miles long. So that would come to 72 wind turbines per mile down the entire coast. What would a 5 megawatt wind turbine look like from the shore? Here are some 5 megawatt wind turbines. They are 6 miles from the shore. And the smaller ones that you see are 3.5 megawatt wind turbines, 10 miles from the shore. Now, assuming we overcome NIMBY, can we go all the way to maximum offshore wind? Well, it appears the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management has set aside 418 square miles for wind farms. And you can pack 2,436 turbines in that area. But that's just a quarter of the area needed for maximum offshore wind. So that leaves us 14 gigawatt equivalent short on this play. That's 14 nuclear power plants worth. To recap, if you want a 100% renewable solution in New Jersey, Here's what you need to do. In addition to maxing out solar rooftop, you need to cover an area the size of Morris County with solar panels, an area the size of Atlantic County with wind turbines, and put 72 wind turbines per mile down the entire coast. That's over 2,000 square miles of visible energy infrastructure. And the cost is gonna be about 326 billion, with a B, which is a great stimulus, but also a great challenge. And finally, we haven't even discussed the mining, storage, and grid issues. Message from the scoreboard committee. Don't panic. First, remember, New Jersey is the most densely populated state in the Union. We have a lot of people using a lot of energy in a little space. So we have a bigger challenge than most states. It might be easier in your state. Second, we're double checking the solutions project numbers because we think they're too high. Check out this number here, the end use power delivered number. They've put here 33 gigawatt equivalent. You know how we estimated that New Jersey is a 24 nuclear power plant state? What this number means is that they think it's more of a 33 nuclear power plant state. And that's a big difference. And no, this isn't the nameplate capacity difference. They've got nameplate capacity right here, 130 gigawatts. Uh, and they've got the capacity factors right here. So it checks out. They've covered that. Attention, scoreboard committee. One of the first things we have to do is nail down the total end-use power delivered number for each state. Is New Jersey a 33 gigawatt equivalent state? Is it 24? Nine power plants is a big difference. And maybe it's even more, maybe less. Not knowing the total number is like playing football and having no idea how long the field is. Okay, that about wraps it up for this video. And wow, we covered a lot of ground and we uncovered a lot of gaps. And that's the way it is. There are gaps in everyone's understanding of how to get to zero carbon. That's why I made this video, because we need to talk about those gaps live at a zero carbon coaching clinic. Some people say, you know, we have the solutions we need to address climate change, we just lack political will. That line really annoys me. I feel frustrated and betrayed when I hear it. It's not just political will. It's will in general. It's solution aversion. It's confusion. Um, we, we have to tackle this head on. We can't be fuzzy about the solutions and then just wave our hands about politics. That's not what's going on here. And the longer we put this off, this conversation, the worse it gets, and people are just gonna go down with the ship. That's what's at stake here. Spaceship Earth, we're gonna go down with that ship. We live on a balmy, blissful planet. We have it really good. The weather is awesome. And, and we're in overtime right now. Team Doom is dancing in civilization's end zone. And of course, I use my share of fossil fuels and I have just as much solution aversion 
and avoidance as anyone else. And that needs to stop. Now, I am committed to solving this problem once and for all with you. Because I can't do it alone. I need you. You need me. We need each other. And we need a whole bunch of other people that, you know, we don't have. So let's get together. Um, all the zero carbon coaches out there, you know who you are. Let's set up a fully fielded zero carbon coaching clinic. Let's get everyone in the room that needs to be in the room to make this happen. Let's do this. Are you in? Here's what you need to do. Take the coach's pledge, sign up for a clinic. When we get a critical mass, we'll have a planning meeting. In the meantime, let's talk. Comment below, send us an email, tweet, social media. Don't forget to share, subscribe. And we'll see you at the coaching clinic.